Get ready to quit the build. The QTB crew is rounding up all the gaming news and hot topics of the week with a little extra something. And here are your hosts, Bruno and Nick. Here he is. There he is. Wait for it. That's what I was afraid of. <laughs> oh, right, yeah. Yeah, Bruno's fixing his mic. Yes, sorry, everybody. Hi, everybody. Hello. Welcome. Yeah, haven't even tweeted this out yet. So much news to get over here to get to. It's a lost track of time. Here we go. That should be hey, there we are. <clears throat> now nice. we're now we're on there. Okay. Cooking with gas. This is how this is how sausage is made, people. This is these are the things. It. I got my biggest fan back there. We're all set to go. <laughs> it's never gonna stop. <laughs> it's never gonna stop. I love it. I love the bit. <laughs> we're gonna roll oh, with it. Right. Uh let me get some awesome Let's get on my chill end. hop radio for the, for the background mm. there courtesy chill of hop. uh chill hop music thank you for that let me some chill hop some lo-fi action yeah though. i do that mm -hmm. i do that i'm a lo-fi man i'm not gonna lie i they they were uh the the u2's series um they're doing that um you know i'm talking about they make those statues of like popular youtubers um youtube it's, it's like funko pops but like for uh for like youtube people. really i never heard yeah. of this um, U2s, T O O Z. They're making a um, a U2s of that. Uh, oh, the lo-fi lo -fi girl? girl. Yeah, and yeah, yeah. Cat. Nice. I've seen that. I, I've run that. I've run that channel many times while yeah. getting some, uh, some stuff done around the house. Yeah, it's a good one. It's a good one. I like it. Well, we've got some awesome stuff um, in store for tonight's yeah, episode. So, so much yeah. Um, are you about ready to kick things off? How's my I mic check? Let me set. do a yeah, mic check to make it audacity. Test one, one two, my, uh... three. Test one, two, three, four. One, two, three, four. Okay. That's a smidgen different. And hey, to everyone joining, welcome. By the way, we um, this will be our first episode stream um, as Twitch affiliates. Woo! So we do have yeah. um, access now. If you'd like to cheer bits or uh, subscribe, uh, thank you so much if you do. Um, you get access to our new emotes and that tier one emote, the power Q, part of the quit the build uh, yeah. logo there. Pretty cool stuff. And Bruno, you said you had some surprises you're cooking up there for uh, um, like the currency rewards, the Q bucks. Uh, I do. So right now we currently have, you can redeem the the very first thing you can redeem on here. Let me pull it up. Is the DVD, thing. The DVD box and there it goes. Woohoo. We're just going to oh let God. it roll there for just a minute so you can see <laughs> that this overlay goes yeah. all the way over top of her. Look, there it goes. I'm there just going to I'm going to fall and away gonna all be waiting around. For that, the moment that it hits the corner. That's the only reason. Is it, it Will it or won't it? You know what I mean? Yeah. Whoa. It's like real. It's like really here. Wow. I'm going to try and hit it. it. Are you going to hit it? Does it work? Oh, I don't know. <laughs> I'm just gonna move it, move it all <laughs> for yeah, style. Okay. Okay. So you can you can redeem that. We're gonna have some other cool things that you can redeem yeah. uh, in chat for different things. But that's just the one that I I was like I saw this idea and I was like gotta roll with this. Gotta roll with this. I love it. So yeah. Uh, and those the, those are the power cues in the chat right there. You can see. Um, along with a bunch of other emotes, we have, um, yeah, if we have unlock more slots, we'll have some other, some other cool stuff. We have uh, swag and the what it do, what it do. Yeah. How about that? Nice. They just approved all those too. So we were, we're they good did. to go with that. It's awesome. Rocking and rolling. All right. All right. What is my nickname for today? Yeah, let's pull one out of the hat here, and it looks like we're going to be landing on... Have we done have we, have we done Crompton Cartwright? I feel like I've heard that one, maybe. I think you might have pulled that one when you did the, uh, one of the Earth Ploppers uh, roster. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. I did that one. Okay. Um, have we done Anaconda? 
No, no, we have not. <laughs> okay, <laughs> that's what we're gonna do then. And Nick Conda, my and Nick Conda don't want none unless you got bun sign. <laughs> oh boy. Okay, let me make sure we're local recording here and take us away with the sync whenever you want. There, Nick. All right, let's do. Um... Uh, what's the other one from? Uh, I was just thinking about this. There's a there's a couple good ones in there. Oh yes, uh, here we go. Y you'll know what to do. <clears throat> Banana na na neo. Banana na 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 na. Sporin. Very nice. <laughs> okay. <laughs> love it. <laughs> the best pitch clip. I love it. Uh, okay. Um. <laughs> We're recording, and let me get the show notes up here. Yep, local recording's good on my end. Okay. What it do? Welcome to the QTB podcast. We're so glad you could join us. My name is Bruno, and with me, as always, is my childhood friend and co-host, Nick Anaconda. My Anaconda don't want none, none unless, unless you, you got, got puns. puns. Oh! Oh, puns! puns. Whoa. Look at that! that oh, we yeah. are so ready for tonight, and believe believe it or not, we have a jam packed episode because they have yeah. just been dropping news on us all day. And I thought to myself, "There's no way we're going to be able to cover everything, so we might yeah, as well try." Yeah, we might as well go ahead and get start started. So, what is on the list tonight, there, Nick? Oh man, we've got a lot to cover, Bruno. And you know, later we're going to be ha kind of having a, a news update, if you will, on not one but two different stories that we've already covered on previous podcast episodes. Kind of some updates, big re reversals or just changes to the story. Um, one about uh, the PlayStation Store um, will be continuing its its PS3 and Vita options previously announced to be closing over the summer. Also, uh, an update on that Discord conversation that was being had about uh, a purchase or an acquisition by Microsoft. And later on, we're going to be talking about this new Fortnite Batman crossover. Not that the crossover itself is new. Batman's been in the game for a while with this new comic series. Yeah. Um, and uh, some unexpected uh, complications that have been coming with people getting a hold of, oh, uh, of codes. And yeah, I, I know there's a, there's a Bruno Fortnite rant the, in there somewhere. The, the so. Timmy's are going to ruin this. I'm telling you. Race for impact. <laughs> um, but uh, yeah. You know, we got to hop right into it because you're right. We do have a lot to talk about, Bruno. This is this is massive news, you know, that that came across. And uh, just a few hours, really, before we started the podcast, um, Jeff Kaplan announcing that after 20 years with Blizzard, he is stepping down no. as the director of Overwatch. Papa Jeff, Papa Jeff, what have you done? <laughs> no, what what are we going to do gonna now? I don't know. My favorite thing about uh, Jeff Kaplan was the fact that that one YouTuber guy used to take all of his like clips and mash them up to make something completely absurd. Yeah, <laughs> that was the My, best. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> I don't it, know. It reached, a, it reached a new level of meta when that guy, um, whenever Jeff Kaplan would do like a, an announcement. He or it was it was when he did that uh, 24 hour or not 24 hour, but it was a long stream. Um, oh, the Christmas fire. Oh, Remember yeah. he, like, he just, just kind of hanging out where he just sat down and just stared at the screen. And like every so often he would say something like once every two hours. Um, and it was at some point he actually said certain words that that YouTube content creator had asked him to make. Um, so oh, that boy. he could work it in. Like, hey, this is this is for you specifically. Like, you know, the I words remember that. like, you know, blank and and <laughs> and mushy. You know, and like it's weird words that he really wanted to get into a, one of his videos. Um, but you know, he is there. It's very rare in in the gaming community to have somebody that's sitting very high up. You know, in a not quite a CEO level, um, but but close to it. Yeah. Where you have so much control over a series where you're so beloved by by fans. It's a really tough needle to thread because you have to keep your shareholders happy. You oh, have yeah. to keep everybody happy while also being a community rep, you know, for a game um, in a way that that represents the game. Right. Jeff Kaplan yeah. and Overwatch even after his departure, kind of are inseparable, right? Yo, well, I mean, I, when you were talking about uh, these 
pinnacles of people that are <laughs> in the gaming realm. Like the last guy I can remember that really had an impact on leaving a series was Cliff Blazinski. Do you remember him? He was like kind of head of Epic Games and the Gears of War series. And he left and everyone thought, oh, man, what's going to happen to this series now that, you know, Cliff is gone? I remember when when that happened. So it's it's always sad to see people who are at the head of a studio leave. And um, it makes you feel like something's going to go wrong with the IP that you love, right? Like, yeah. <laughs> there, we have too many stories of, of instances where pe new people have come in and, and just tried to reinvent the wheel, and it's like, oh, man, like, you're not in touch with the gamers, what people really want at all. Oh, you're just ruining it. Thank you for ruining our beloved game. <laughs> but By hopefully the way, that doesn't happen. That guy is uh, Dino Flask. That was the YouTube channel. Dino Flask. Um, there you that, go. Yeah, he would he would just yeah take all these all these words and just mash them up in these in these crazy ways. Uh, these days with the voice AI, you probably don't need Dino Flask. You can probably just like let let you know one of those predictive AIs just oh listen my to Jeff gosh. for a couple I love hours those. and he can you know, deep fake his way into into saying you know the entire lyrics to uh, Never Gonna Give You Up. The only thing that makes me upset with those AI things is we were going to use one of those for our show, but then they were like, nope, can't use it for commercial purposes. Well, then what the yeah. heck am I going to use it for, MIT? Let's be honest. Like, if I'm, I'm not on. using it for a commercial, like, what am I, or advertising, then why would I even want it? Like, I don't, I'm not just going to play around with GLaDOS's voice or SpongeBob's voice or yeah. my own. I'm not a weirdo. What is this? Like, uh, you know, the, remember the Bonzi buddy back in the day that that PC monkey, like purple monkey and his whole thing was like you could like make him say things back to you in like a robot voice. Are you, talking about, a, are you talking about the Furby? No, <laughs> no, it was like Ichi, but it was like the same era. But he was like this purple monkey that like you would download him and he was supposed to be like a desktop companion. That was the thing oh, right back in the 90s, having a desktop yeah. companion. I remember the sheep. Remember, we've talked about the sheep. Yeah, those yeah, are e my favorite. Right? Yeah, I love e-sheep. So for those of you yeah. that don't know, that there are these little sheep that you could download on your, and they would just run around on your desktop. And occasionally, a UFO would come in and suck one of them away. And that was the coolest little thing ever. So this was something similar, but it was a purple monkey. Yeah, I mean, he would just kind of stand there, but it was, boy, he was he was <laughs> he DLC before standing. DLC existed because it. Was, I remember as a kid downloading it, and he was basically like spyware. Um, they would they would use it like to track your what you were doing on your computer. Oh, okay. And but he was popular, and it was crazy because like all of his functions beyond like the super basic stuff, you'd have to pay. It's like, oh, if you want me to sing like Mary had a little lamb, and I'm not kidding, it would be like stupid nursery rhymes. You have to pay like an extra dollar. But uh, enter boy, your credit card information. <laughs> I don't remember exactly how we went from Overwatch to uh, to Bonzi Buddy on that e sheep on uh, Windows 95. But uh, well, that's why you tune into the QTB <laughs> podcast. We are the most influential up and coming gaming yeah. news podcast out there, and the reason why is because most of the stuff we talk talk about comes to fruition. I mean, mm -hmm. you've got Bruno Stradamus over here predicting all types of stuff way yeah. back on like episode five we're predicting you will that exercise yes take into existence. right and so there's only you only come here for the most amazing news and from just just a couple guys right like we're not going to talk yeah. down to you like a gamestop employee who will remain nameless in the martinsburg <laughs> mall who made me feel bad for asking for an xbox 360 i'm not still harboring hate 15 <laughs> years later nick no gatekeeping inventory yeah that's the best <laughs> Yeah. Um, but yeah, so, you know, I, it, it's just crazy to think about. I, I've always associated Overwatch with with Jeff Kaplan and beyond yeah. the memes and beyond, you know, the the ways that we that he kind of allowed himself to have fun with his job. I mean, you're right. You know, it's very difficult for a project or a company or a corporation to really continue to see the, you know, the vision of somebody, you know. Yeah. Is someone going to fill his shoes? Absolutely. But at the end of the day, all that you can really do is just emulate what has been made to fruition. You know, you're never going to have that original spark or that internal vision of what, you know, that one person wanted Overwatch to be that I think really has propelled it to the heights that it is at today. You know, Bruno, we've been we've been talking a lot about about Overwatch 
Overwatch 2 oh, yeah. um, and Overwatch League, um, you know, because these are still extremely popular games and Overwatch By League the is way, still kicking. Philadelphia Fusion, number one right now in the standings. Hey, Look, I, man, I got to give you a shout out for that because I saw that in the rankings the other day and I was like, what? That's yeah. Nick's team. It won't last. We're a classic Philadelphia team. Like when we pop <laughs> off, like we are the best of the best. And then all of a sudden it'll be like just a completely different squad, like halfway through. Um, but, you know, it, it's very cool to see them still being successful. Yeah. But, you know, Bruno, I think uh, h here's my thing. Overwatch 2 has already been a dubious development process, right? Yeah. The game, obviously, as we've talked about before on the show, it has been released too soon. That, re that reveal trailer yeah. um, came out way before it should have. All the way back in 2019 was when we, uh, we first got <laughs> that trailer. Um, and, you know, BlizzCon 2021 came and went. And we got vague information about wait, like, new wait, maps wait. that we the, see. the BlizzCon 2021 already was happen already happened. When yeah, was that? Yeah, that was the one we talked about where uh, where Diablo. Oh got my its, gosh, uh, it came and went so fast and was so lackluster. Yeah. I forgot about it. Oh Whoops. man, whoopsie! How about you. that, man? I, I tell you, <laughs> well, that's <clears throat> that just goes to show you that if you're not out there, like really hitting the ground with some new updates for a game or then why even do why even <laughs> just release a trailer like for yeah. god's sake just why just dumb it down a little bit we don't need such fanfare for for a trailer for something that's a remake right like give us something new and substantial for these for these games and and save your marketing dollars that's my thing like you're spending so much money on on something to to show the the people and then you're right like we haven't had any news about overwatch 2 and i feel like that you know announcing it too early is just the way to go now it's the way to it's the way to announce games so many games have been announced too early no man's sky overwatch the, the first overwatch overwatch one was announced way yeah. too early like i thought when i first saw that i was like oh my gosh please come out for console and they were like oh yeah it's gonna be a pc game you know pc game and then eventually they were like yeah we'll come out with console but it had such like a huge lead up to the actual release and right. you know i feel like we're not getting that with overwatch 2 so it's really i i tell you the thing that kind of that kind of scares me is that last little bit that uh jeff kaplan put in his note which was never accept the world as it appears to be always dare to see it for what it could be i hope you do the same and you know you mentioned that sentiment of like you know you want overwatch to be something right you want it to be right. this amazing thing and sometimes you you meet shareholders face to face you meet people in a boardroom face to face that say actually we'd rather put more effort into this or that or we're not going to do exactly what you had envisioned for that because we're going to save it for this or dlc or whatever it may be and then you run the risk of okay well now we're going to alienate half our audience because you right. know we're not listening to them so yeah, you know, Jeff Kaplan, you know, his history, he goes all the way back to 2002. Obviously, he started on World of Warcraft and developed quests, that kind of thing, um, eventually became a game director for the game. But, you know, as you may recall, Overwatch initially was called Titan, a project called Titan. Yeah. And we didn't quite know what that was going to be. We know mm -hmm. that ultimately what it was meant to be was scrapped and a lot of those assets, yeah. um, you need to you know like uh what's uh, a couple a couple of the original maps in overwatch were most likely meant to be uh areas in this in this titan game um and so eventually it just became you know what we have today which is overwatch and you know I i'm just i'm absolutely amazed because overwatch you know when, when you talk about ambition i mean this guy i believe his name is uh, aaron keller he's got some big shoes to fill assistant director aaron keller is going to be taking over as the mm -hmm. new director on the sequel of Overwatch 2, and really all of the responsibilities that come with the original Overwatch, since the, that game will kind of harbor the new, you know, streamlined yeah. version of Overwatch whenever it manages to release. But like I was talking about, Bruno, because you have a game that obviously they pulled the trigger too early, um, and I, I think the theory does hold up that it was that whole Hearthstone scandal that they were trying to immediately remember. That was right after his apology. That oh, they yeah. Like, Look at this, you know, uh, here, here's <laughs> over here, James over Woods. here. <laughs> yeah. The James Woods approach, uh, James Woods approach to, yeah. uh, Pete's candy. to uh, 
distracting people, right? And I, I think if that hadn't happened, we probably wouldn't have seen a, uh, a trailer like that until maybe 2020 or 2021. Um, it is what it is. It was released. It was done. And because of that, you know, look at what's happening with, with Overwatch right now. Now, I was I was amazed because I was when I went on to uh, ActivePlayer.io, which is our website where you can see the player base statistics, you know, like live right now and like wow. the, the long term statistics for who, who's playing a game, you know. Mm. Um, Overwatch is very healthy. Um, I was kind of expecting to see a bit of, de of, a, of a decline with the lack of updates that the game has had recently, but the game is still very strong, about uh, 6 million active players in the last month, um, and that's about the average number that they've had over the last two years. But I got to tell you, Bruno, you know, knowing that Overwatch 2's release is likely going to be like 2022, I think is the earliest date they said that it could be possible. Absolutely nothing committed to at this point, and that's never a good sign. Um, that we are probably looking at quite a while until this game comes out. And we also know that Overwatch will not be receiving any major updates until Overwatch 2 comes out because of all the development uh, time that's getting you know pumped into it. And all I'm really seeing out of Overwatch right now is new events, new skins, but no real new heroes, right? Echo was the last hero that we yeah. had. And I know that it was it really was the new heroes that brought me back to the game because I wanted to see how it shakes up the meta. I wanted yeah. to see, you know, how they interact, the balance patches, the usually the big ones that would come with the right. release of a character. And without that hype, I mean, it, it seems very hard right now for me personally to hop back into Overwatch. What about you? Well, you're right. When you get to this point in a game where you've, you're seeing a steady, healthy like player base, these are people that have been playing Overwatch since its inception. I don't believe that these are like brand new players. Maybe every once, every few people is a new player, but it, these are the hardcore players that have been playing since the beginning of time and are super amazing. And it's it's always the it's always the player base that's the worst part of any game. We've talked yep. about this before, like. If you <clears throat> if you have a toxic player base, th that's it. Like you're you're sowing the seeds of discord throughout your game and making it not fun to play. And yeah. if it becomes too competitive to where you can't gain levels in a competitive environment because of the people that you're paired up with then that really hinders your ability to have fun because you're like, well, I've got teammates that are throwing and this is a team-based game. And if I leave, then I get penalized for leaving. And I don't want that to happen because, you know, you, I, I want to be able to play the game. So it becomes really, really frustrating. And not only that, Nick, I, I'm, I, I feel like we've moved past the loot box thing, right? I'm done right. with loot boxes. I don't want that anymore. I don't want to have to gamble with the credits that I have. I want to be able to buy what I want. And yeah. I, I think you can do that and have loot boxes, right? I think you can do do both. You can have something where you you might you know, roll the die and, and grab yourself, uh, um, you know, you know, a hit and, and get, you know, a legendary skin. That'd be awesome. But it would be nice if every once in a while something came through an item shop, like in, um, Fortnite, where I get to choose the exact skin that I want instead of having to, you know, play this. Maybe, maybe I'll get it. Maybe I won't like, that's another yeah. reason why I haven't come back to to overwatch so not just the fact that i feel like i'd be walking into a death trap of like well i don't know what this i haven't played in two or three heroes you know so right. I, I'm, I'm at yeah. this point where i was there a hamster in a ball yeah. <laughs> that yeah. was the last one where i was like i don't really know him so i go back to my defaults junk rat tour bjorn <laughs> yeah the winner will always be a strong choice. You oh yeah. Oh yeah. And as we know, you're like, you're like the, I think you're the eighth best Torbjorn in the game. Right? I'm the eighth like best Torbjorn in the game and the third best junk rat in the game. So mm -hmm. those are my two and divas up there too. I'm pretty much like the okay. 12th best diva. So, but the best one in your house, I am, one. I'm the number one gamer in my house. Actually, IGN wow. recently gave me an award for that, for being the number one gamer what in my honor. house. It really is. And I got to tell you, I got stiff competition in here because my wife is a rummy cube master that's what she plays on her wow. phone rummy cube she's all over that so 
you know, and it's intense. I hear her over there and she'll be like, darn. And I'd be like, uh oh, she's getting angry. Like that's the I extent tell of you her the anger. First thing about what that is. So <laughs> Rummy I found Cube? You've never played Rummy, Rummy Cube? Cube? I've never played Rummy Cube. Oh man, Rummy Cube is like Rummy, but um, it's kind of like Cube. Yeah, but you get these little tiles, like Mahjong tiles, that have yeah. the different things, like different numbers mm -hmm. on there and stuff. It's a much easier version of Rummy, and you yeah. can play it for free on your phone. So I'm sure there's yeah. people out there that know Rummy Cube, know what's up, but. Yeah, now, I mean, I'll say this, Bruno, you know, one of the things that I love about Jeff Kaplan, you know, you're talking about toxicity in games, right? Yeah, they have tried everything under the sun. And if I'm, I'm going to say this, if Overwatch can't solve the problem, no one is going to solve the problem, yeah. right? Because there, there's always going to be that culture of, of anonymity behind a microphone that can make people uh, enable them to say things that they would never say to someone's face. Yeah. Right. But at the same time, you know, they have tried so many different things to try and, and de-incentivize somebody from being toxic or the exact opposite of positive reinforcement and reward somebody for just being a decent human being. <laughs> and one, one of Thanks the ways that they did- for putting your cart back, Steven. <laughs> like... Exactly, yeah. I um, mean, the corral's right there, man. <laughs> uh, but you know, I, they, one of the things that I like that they tried is they had that, I forget, it's like a reputation system. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's separate I from that. your level, right? Yeah, that you, just by getting accolades, you know, people will give you thumbs up um, at the end of a Shot match color. that you, yeah, exactly. <laughs> that, that was the one that, that was the rare one. That was hard to get that one. But, um, you know, you would naturally increase your reputation level over time. And as long as you didn't disconnect from a match early or if you just stopped getting accolades altogether, that could go down. And every so often they would send you loot box rewards. But I, I just haven't really seen it do a whole lot to combat the problem in either direction. I know they, they've tried things like they added that block list, right, where you can have a very limited number of people that you're like, do not match me with that person. <laughs> and you can rotate it. And at least that makes you feel better. You know, we talk about how I quit the build about backing out of the game when we're feeling bad that's a great way to make sure like i yeah. cannot be in a match with this person right now um and rotate oh, yeah. that, that that short list as you go I, I do that on i do that on fortnite too sometimes i'm like sometimes i report people for just being too aggressive like whoa bro let's take it back a notch like you literally came after me in the storm i don't know if you've ever had that happen but i'm mm. like trying to come out of the storm and no they come into the storm to get me and it's like listen this is a new level of hate that i've never yeah. experienced in my Extra life salty. Yeah, yeah. yes and this is way too i mean I, we'll just cure all the meats with this salt i mean goodness <laughs> my my thing was always the people that would drop in um, and they would like, they, okay, I, wherever this guy goes, I'm going to be right behind him. You know, whatever rooftop I land on, oh, yeah. this guy's right on top of me and it's a pickaxe fight. <laughs> oh no, 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 sir. No, sir. Yeah. See my, I had this guy, I had the same guy, the same thing happened to me, right? He dropped in on me. He started picking, pickaxing me. I turned the tables on him and he's like one shot. His buddy comes in to save his little hiney. And I got to tell you, I've never felt more disrespected in my life and I, I and nick listen as og gamers you know like we th it's like you were talking about with that mario kart arcade like disrespect the straight disrespect that that kid like gave to you what, what was that something someone's okay? doing the dvd bounce i'll edit this out oh okay <laughs> <laughs> I am one hour, one decision. We'll edit this out later. I wanted to have a reaction. To it, like, oh, what's that? <laughs> um, the the level of disrespect that that little kid gave you is palpable. Like, I'm still a little salty from it because I'm like, you don't recognize, you don't recognize, first of all, that you got lucky with a blue shell. Okay, that's one. Two, yeah. let's rematch right now. All coins, nothing. Let's just nut and see who can get around the track faster, Tim. Let's just see, big man. I'm not That's even gonna right. call you Timmy. We're gonna call That's you right. Tim, a grown You're man's off the name. Line. Oh man, <laughs> I tell you. But man, I'm I'm telling you, Bruno. Like they they they've tried different things, and you're right. I think Overwatch kind of is stuck in its ways. Now they did add the way that you could earn, you know, currency. But this has been a pretty old thing. Um, when you get duplicates of things, and then eventually spend that on yeah, but items like, to come in seasonally. It's like but it the, was a it's drop like, in the yeah. Bucket. It's like GameStop giving you back. Oh, here's uh, you know, what can you get for the PS5? I can give you about three fifty. Like you know. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> three dollars and fifty cents. There you go. Yeah, tree fifty. Tree fifty. <laughs> 
Oh my gosh. But you know, and, and the Overwatch League, I have to say, you know, I we we've talked about this before too. I I really was expecting them to just kind of fold in. Like I, I know that when uh, the numbers didn't quite work out for Heroes of the Storm, that they kind of shuttered the esports side of that uh, pretty rapidly. Um, and, and with everything happening with COVID and all of these teams getting shuffled, right? Like my team, the Fusion, they got sent out to South Korea to participate in that division. Yeah. Um, and, and they were are, I think, still in the process of building a stadium in Philadelphia for them to play in. Um, and it just looked like a lot of things were beginning to stack up that were leading towards a, a very unhappy ending. But at least as of right now, I have to say the 2021, you know, premiere kickoff very strong. It seems like they're gonna they're gonna fire on all on all on all cylinders here. I just want to see them get back because I don't think you can have a league where these teams that are supposed to be about being a home team, right? Yeah. I'm not going to continue, you know, three or four years down the road to say, okay, well, I'm near Philadelphia, right? I picked, I have my jersey, my Philadelphia Fusion jersey. Yeah. I want to go to a home game in Philadelphia. Mm -hmm. And if you're going to keep them out there for, for much longer and still have their name attached to it, it's so insincere. But I, I do think that they're, they're going to be able to do that. But the numbers have to be there, right? So it, it, I think it really does matter what viewership is going to be like for for this season um because entire rosters have just been decimated you know and that's the thing season. like the the esports it's so hard to like keep up with the the changes there needs to be a rule that says like you've got to finish out the the c I, I know that seems like a strict rule but the seasons aren't long enough like in football you know or 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 uh and that's like one of the shortest seasons that you can have like in a game right like it's not like baseball where you've got 160 games that you're playing we're we're playing a few overwatch matches and then you've got people that are just jumping ship midway through the season and you can't you can't develop any relationship with these players because you want to support the team you want to support the players and when they jump to and from each team, you're like, well, now I've got to buy a new Fleta jersey. Like, you know, I never mm -hmm. thought I'd be rooting for the Shanghai Dragons, but here we are. Like, but it's still the meta. I gotta, <laughs> I gotta, I gotta switch over. Right. So, and, and yeah. that's one of the things that I really love about F1 is that you really grow to know these guys over the over the course of of um, their career because they've been racing for so long, and it's not something you can just dip in and dip out of. So uh, you feel more connected to people who are, who, who are in something like F1 and you're watching them race. And then not only that, you get to see them on Twitch afterwards, like Lando Norris. He, you know, streams all the time. So it's not only cool to see him like out there on the, you know, on the track, like racing around, but you actually see him, you know, on Twitch. So if you're, if you can't get these relationships with players like you can with you know f1 it's just it's it's something that no one's ever going to be able to to jump on board with because you're always going to feel like you're missing out on something of like well who's 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 on the team this week right and at what point does it become fair at what point do you be like well i how do I know which team I want to root for? There's none of the same people yeah. on here. So I, yeah, I don't know. It, 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 it's a, it's a bigger conversation for esports in general, right? Because you know, when, you know, the NFL has a draft or something, or someone signs a contract, you understand. And once you understand how free agents and, and that kind of thing work, where you can feel like, you know, you've got a franchise team where people are going to be sticking around for a long time. I mean, even in those sports, they don't stick around for a yeah. long time. I mean, you have your Tom Brady's that well, that and they stay have in free spot, agents right? because but, of injuries, right? Like that's why right. they have that's why they have backup. Yeah. Who's getting you know who's getting a cramp, a carpal tunnel cramp up on up on stage and is like, sorry guys, I can't I can't mouse today. Like it's just a little too much for me. Like that's not gonna happen. Yeah. Like we don't need a backup backup uh you know uh tank or anything like yeah. that for your team like just move on and and have these have these stable positions that people can get behind instead of like you know trading them out like it isn't a traditional sport in terms of like being a traditional physical sport so you can't treat it the same way and be like oh well we're gonna have free agents and it's like if you're not signed yeah. you're not signed you're not a pro we don't have that <laughs> One of my biggest frustrations with the original season of uh, Overwatch League was there was a guy on the on the Fusion called uh, Fraggy. 
Um, he was the nicest guy. He was such a such a cool dude. And he played a, a Reinhardt. He was a Reinhardt main. And when whenever the meta would shift away from Reinhardt, they would just bench the guy because he wouldn't play anything else to their expectations. And for like all of season two, like he was on the roster, but he would never get played. And there was like one game where they brought him out, and all the fans like flipped out. They're like, "Oh yeah, there he is. You know, he's finally yeah. playing again." Um, and I think that's really frustrating. Yeah, when you have a team of people where you could be a fan of somebody, they get signed to a team, and then they never get put out. You're right. This is not the NFL. You don't have to have that back catalog. But I mean, those are the rules, and they're hard to yeah. come back from. But Bruno, the one thing I think everyone can agree on is that for Overwatch League, um, I don't know what, if any capacity really Jeff had with the actual like operations of that league, but obviously the conceptualization started with him. Yeah. Um, you know, and and for Overwatch one and two and beyond, these are just massive shoes to fill. So um, nothing but respect to Jeff Kaplan for the legacy that he left behind. Yeah. Um, staying with any AAA company these days in any position for twenty years is an absolute achievement. Um, because I think very few people can handle that level of, of of pressure and expectation, but I think he he met it with much aplomb. Bruno, I'm going to use the word aplomb. That's today. a that's a that's a sat word, Nick. Thank you. That is yeah. a sat word if I ever heard one, or, or as <laughs> yeah. my wife would call, that's a membean word because <laughs> she used to work for uh, this say uh, this uh, vocabulary company and it was called membean, and so they had mm. she learned all types of amazing words like that. A plethora. That's one of her favorites Ooh, that I use. <laughs> plethora. Well, I'll tell you, Bruno, one thing that we have a plethora of, which is our merch that we have from our friends at Pierce Unlimited. Yeah. Pop Art Vault, Bruno. That we of course are having every month a big giveaway and if you want to get a piece of that pie all you have to do is leave us a review on uh, apple podcast slash itunes um, when you do that and we will get you in the running listen to the first episode of every month and you are going to be entered in the running we just announced on twitter our april prize pack a lot of cool love things it. in there i love that that uh that lackluster <laughs> sticker on there that looks like a blockbuster membership card <laughs> Right? That you got would, your lackluster card? <laughs> yeah, exactly. I don't know where I'd stick it, but I'd stick it somewhere prominent. Oh, I'll tell you that that's, much. That's, that's the title of my sex tape, I tell you. Um. <laughs> I think we're sponsored by them, Bruno. Yeah, we are. And it's a good thing they're my sponsor because every day is sponsored by Pearson Limited for this show. For marketing media that works in bespoke design to power your business, visit PierceUnlimited.com. And that's the only, uh, you know, way we're going to be able to get through that. So <laughs> moving on, the PlayStation oh Store on PS3 is coming back, Nick. What, what is not this? Not only that, not only that, <laughs> but they the heard PS us. Vita. They heard yeah, us. Someone heard us. This once is, again, this is why like we are the most influential up-and-coming gaming news podcast out there. We put out... <laughs> Yeah, a right. story that talks about how they're getting yeah. rid of PlayStation. We we you know they don't come up in the news too often, and when they do, it's a it's a shot to the heart, right? And not in a good way, not right. the Bon Jovi way, but um, you give love a bad name way because we don't want to see games go by the wayside. So it's coming back. Somebody heard the podcast, obviously, right? It's coming back. What's the deal? That's right. They had the board meeting. They were like, "Wait, hold on, what?" Oh, the QT but the QTB guys don't like us anymore. Walk it back. Walk, Walk it, back. it back. That's Walk right. It back. Yeah. <laughs> now they didn't exactly respond with the same quickness that we had, of course, when like when when Microsoft walked back that uh, that that price increase. But look, I'm I, I will take this. You know, yeah. when we first talked about this announcement, um, and this story is a uh, compliment of the PlayStation blog that the PlayStation Store will uh, continue operations on both the PS3 and the Vita. Um, now, they did leave out the PSP, so there is still going to be one store, at least as of right now, that will get shuttered there in the summer if everything goes the way that they initially announced. But, you know, we, we talked about how one of the things that was very prominent to me was how big of a community of people there are to this day around the, the PlayStation Vita, um, that despite, you know, it being a financially unsuccessful device, that, you know, it really was one of the greatest handheld consoles to this day. It just wasn't, it was It was a, a device that was not made in its time yeah. or for a time that made sense for it. And so, you know, I, I we were talking about, and I was surprised to discover there are still a lot of indie games, uh, indie producers, devs that were making games for the Vita or had games that only existed on that digital store. Okay. Wow. And so, you know, it, you're talking about 
uh, taking away someone's livelihood from them in some way. Yeah, they probably weren't making crazy money off of a, you know, a defunct console, <laughs> but th with, with such a passionate fan base behind these devices, obviously there was something there. Yeah. And so uh, obviously I, I think they probably did a, a closer look with all three of these stores and said, okay, well the PSP, it, the, it's not there, right? The money's yeah. not there. And I, I, I get that. Yeah, it I understand is an that. old device. It's a handheld device. <laughs> a lot of PSP owners moved on to the Vita. It was um, a slick but, console, Nick. I, I oh. liked it. Like it, it, it was beautiful. The, the yeah. screen on there was amazing. The graphics were great for the time, but you're right. It was just a little too far ahead of its time. I think had yep. we had more digital copies of things available for the uh psp um and the vita then it would have it been a different story or something simple like you remember the fact that they used to sell umd uh movies essentially oh, yeah. like you know small little movies for it but now <laughs> with like netflix on there the ability to have that app it negates the need for something like a umd movie yeah. so you're right this is just it's it's sad to see a, a console go go by the you know the you know the the wayside, the wayside like that, yeah. but it's it's just it's we've had that before. Dreamcast came out before its time, and and you know the PSP. So at this point, you really just have to say, okay, what are we going to do to save face with our fans? Because though. <laughs> We've got loyal customers that play this. What do we, we yeah. have to walk it back, Frank? Reverse That's the right. switch. <laughs> exactly. Yeah, you know, I, I I just look at and yeah, you're right. When I went on to decent takes, that was actually one of the the topics that came up was about the PSP. Um, and 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 Job was like he he thought it was the greatest you know, a uh, handheld console of all time. And I think he expected me to go in the opposite direction because I'm just not big on Sony. Um, and I, he was wrong because I actually stated on the yeah. show that I think the PSP is the greatest uh, handheld console of all time. And I stand by that decision. It was very much ahead of its time. And there was just something about the graphics compared to any other handheld yeah. I had ever had in my hands before. The closest we had at the time was the Nintendo DS. And it was just a, such an iconic and memorable system to have that you know the the idea of having a a small disc you know in yeah. in your PSP the UMD that hybrid cartridge disc you know uh, combo mix up that no one else was doing and it was just there was just something magic about it that i think really won't be replicated anytime soon in the era of digital content but yeah you know so we I, i'm very happy for PS3 and PS Vita owners i mean look that doesn't mean that down the road they can't reverse this yeah. and i will say this when the news initially came out, Bruno, about about these stores getting delisted, especially the PS Vita, because like I said, so many titles on there that are digital only, that would be the only way to get them. Yeah. It created a little bit of a, of a gold rush, kind of a panic, because everyone's saying like, oh, we have until this date to buy as many of these games as we can, back them up onto devices so yeah. that when that when that switch is flipped, we've got everything that we need to continue to play this this device to our expectations. Yeah. And so a lot of people I've seen on Twitter made big purchases on there. They went in and just, you know, I'll take this, 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 and even things that maybe they wouldn't have purchased otherwise. Oh boy. Only for the news to then break of, okay, just kidding. <laughs> you know, and I don't, I don't. Now I, that I we've got your think, money, walk it back. Walk it back, Frank. Walk right. it back. Yeah. You know, they did the exact opposite of, uh, of what Nintendo did with, uh, with the Mario games. They're killing them. They actually did walk it back. And I think... Once you've made that announcement that you're going to shutter something, there's always going to be that section of your fan base that feels betrayed no matter how you respond to it from there. And I totally get it. Like if you made, you know, racked up a couple hundred bucks in credit card debt to buy all these games because you felt like you might not ever get a chance. That's... You should probably reevaluate your life because that's probably not something you should do at any state is to rack up debt for a bunch of games. Yeah, you but, know it happens. Yeah, we do. Y'all, oh yeah, we do know it happens, especially for all those kids out there buying V bucks. Did you see that one lady who came in and saw that her son had? Like bought forty eight thousand, uh, forty eight thousand V bucks, which if if you know, oh. like it's I think it's like eighty bucks for it's like seventy nine ninety nine for thirteen thousand V bucks. So with forty eight thousand, he had spent a you know a few hundred dollars there. Right. <laughs> you spent yeah. that much money on V bucks. 
she was she was not having it. Mm-hmm. We were about to see. I was about to witness a murder on <laughs> on TikTok, and then all of a sudden it cut to black. So That's we'll just right. assume that he got a nice butt whooping. Yeah, um, he but... got it. But <laughs> I mean, half of those things on TikTok are are are, are scripted. But to be but fair, no, he you know... yeah, he really he legit oh, okay. he, he she sh- she showed the actual video and like yeah. he had forty eight thousand V bucks. <laughs> he was locked and loaded. <laughs> Really you know, was. so many. I, I, I'm glad that we're going to be the first generation of of gamers that understand how to put like basic parental locks on games, so that you know, yeah, your credit card's on file, but you can't have you know your kid go in there and just buy, 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 buy a hundred times over. Yeah. Like, 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 come on, like it's not that hard to prevent. But I know that a lot of um, you know older parents that didn't grow up with these games, like to them, it's a completely foreign concept that you can like actually prevent your kids from doing things on a device oh well yeah but uh yeah you know <laughs> so that, that's the news yeah that's that's the news um and a uh, great reversal sony thank you you know yes. we need to see more of this we we need to have a bigger conversation as a gaming community about game preservation bruno this is going to be the first generation of up-and-coming gamers that are they're growing up with these devices where retro gaming to them is going to take on a different meaning than it does to us we can always go back and play a Nintendo game, a Super Nintendo game, because there was no online check. There was no piece of equipment in there that if it went bad, you had to validate it online before you could play. You just need to know where to get the parts. Right? Yeah, right, yeah. But once you start heading into this territory, now kids are, are, are going to be faced with the prospect of 40, 50 years down the road, only being able to tell their kids about the games that they played. And there might be games out there where there's no physical way to get a hold of it because yep. of all of the things that were put in place to make sure they couldn't play the games that they love. We need to be more vocal about this as a community. And we have been, you know, yeah. it, it, it was the outcry on Twitter that caused this um, because we can't we can't let companies continue to get away with this of providing all of these games with only one way to get them. And once they decide to flip that switch, there they go. Um, I feel like a I feel like an American flag just rose behind you and started <laughs> flapping in the wind and like tur, 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 we've tur, got to get tur, mad. Tur, 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 I'm tur, mad tur, as hell and I'm not gonna take it anymore. Tur, tur, tur. That's yeah. what I, that's what I want to see because I, I I felt I felt you touched a brother's heart. You really yeah. did. You right right well, now. You I'm for, ready uh, to go. <laughs> when you vote for Humpkin Springleaf in 2024. That's that's going to be one of their platforms is oh, saving yeah. the platforms. Saving the platforms. <laughs> yep. And and you know honestly Nick, I think that that's something that we could totally see in the future is is it reminds me of uh Back to the Future 2 when Marty walks into the like malt shop and it's an old style malt shop of like stuff from the 80s, right? Yeah. That's that type of nostalgia, I think, is going to carry through and we're going to have these cafes where you can go in and play CRT TVs. It's and and I don't mean this in, in the terms of like a niche place because they're, they already exist. Right. There's tons of like niche little places you can go in and have that experience. But I foresee this being something of more like. Uh, like an actual franchise where you can yeah. go around and play these play these games like a Dave and Buster's and and, and experience them because you're right something there's something about playing these games in their original form on the you know the the tube TV on those yeah. original controllers that sometimes stuck or didn't work and having that that experience. Uh, as we had it is something that we we should preserve and and unfortunately it's going to be really difficult in, as we move into the age of, of digital media and that's the really interesting thing is because I as a as a you know as a former YouTuber who's made tons and tons of videos I've got some a lot that aren't visible to the public mm-hmm. and these videos have, hundreds of thousands of views they've been put on playlists and whatnot and they're just not available anymore and people will still write me and comment on new videos that are on my channel and mention these old videos and say like i really wish i could watch this video i miss Mm -hmm. this video i miss the the series that you did i really liked it and i wanted to like show my my girlfriend or whatever like i just like watching them so I think that 
as we move into this era where there's so much content that's being funneled in every single day, we're going to miss stuff. We're, I, I, that's why they say that nostalgia is dying and that the current generation will not be nostalgic for things. And I think it's not that they won't be nostalgic for things, is that they won't have the same level of nostalgia because a new game will just come along. It'll be a new Angry Birds. You're not going to be nostalgic for Angry Birds 1 because Angry birds 2 was way better and right. <laughs> you know so these this idea of being nostalgic for 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 media is going by the wayside and it's something that we're not going to see in the future and if i have to say going by the wayside one more time in this podcast <laughs> i swear <laughs> we, somebody get a counter somebody it's oh at least goodness. three <laughs> Well, I'll tell you one thing that has definitely gone by the wayside, Bruno. What is and it? That is Discord is, uh, has ended their deal talks with Microsoft. Compliments of the Wall Street oh, Journal. Outie. Yeah, that's not it. Ain't happening. Oof. So um, Discord has halted talks to sell itself to potential suitors, um, which included Microsoft. They weren't the only people that were looking to to, to put in a, a bid with Discord. Um, you know, they are resuming interest and in potentially uh, doing an IPO down the line and listing themselves. Um, you know, Microsoft, so here, here's the crazy thing. Microsoft, apparently, the number they put out there to Discord, $10 billion was the number they put out there. And what's that's wild a lot of, is... That's a lot of monies. That's a lot of money bucks. That's a lot and of money. What's, what's crazy is that Discord's annual revenue last year was something in the range of 100 to 200 million. Like we said, their only real source of income was those Discord Nitro subscriptions, which doesn't really do a whole lot. You said it was like um, 168 million. <laughs> yeah, right. There you go. Like it's, it's 10 it's, billion. It's, that's geez. that's a Shark Tank level valuation. Someone goes in like, yeah, I'm looking for uh, you know one million dollars for 0.5 percent of my company. <laughs> um, you know, Mr. Wonderful's out. <laughs> <laughs> um, but yeah, you know, it, it's it's not surprising. I think there's a lot of of these kinds of conversations that happen behind the scenes where there is an insider info and we just never find out about them. Um, I think that obviously there was a little bit of a of a leak somewhere in there, and that's yeah. how we found out about this even happening but i have to say i i i thought i would think with a number like 10 billion dollars that enough people at that company would be like yes please buy us thank you right like you, what, what do you think going through their head right now i think that they're i think the well i don't know so if i'm the wife of one of the guys that like owns the discord you know thing then i'm probably going to be a little a little po'd I'm going to be a little PO that we didn't just get, you know, set up for life with a $10 billion acquisition. <laughs> but I did just see a commercial the other night for Discord. It's the first commercial I've ever seen on live television, I guess. Or maybe it was like okay. Hulu or something. But it was the right. first ad I'd ever seen for Discord. So maybe they're hedging their bets and they're saying, you know, if this many people are interested in us, maybe we're doing something right. Let's keep it going. Let's keep it cruising, right? And see what mm -hmm. we can we can come up with. And I think that's admirable. But yeah. you always have to wonder, don't let this come back and bite you in the butt. Because oftentimes, mm -hmm. if, if people like the Microsofts of the world don't get what they want, then they often just create it themselves. And yeah. it's that can be a problem, too. You can't compete with Microsoft-level money. If they're willing to just you know, throw $10 billion to Discord, yeah. uh, that's, that's some serious bucks. What are they willing to do for their mm -hmm. own platform that they might develop or, or integrate with other things. So, you know, this was this, I would say Microsoft doesn't need discord. They don't need right. discord, but right. discord is going to need someone to pay back their, in their angel investors or, or, um, JG Wentworth. I don't know who the, whoever the, seven, seven cash now. they're going to need oh, it. My God. <laughs> yeah. You know, I, here, here's my hot take on it. Bruno is that I think if, if Microsoft had found more success with the, the, the purchase of Beam that then became Mixer, um, if that had become the platform that they wanted it to be and all the money they had poured into exclusivity deals with uh, streamers like like Ninja, that we would probably see more of a of a willingness for somebody like Discord to get bought out. Because I think you're right. Yeah. I know I think that's gonna be a boardroom conversation of like, yeah, if 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 we don't accept this offer, 
they've got a backup plan to crush to absolutely crush us. Yeah. But at the same time, if if you know, if I'm Discord and I'm looking at what they did with Mixer and being like they poured all that money and they had this you know, this great game plan to get into the streaming game and ultimately it didn't pan out. Um, you know, they had to shudder that maybe they really can't come at us the way that they want to and they don't have as much uh, uh, flexibility as they think that they do. Um, so I, obviously there was enough people there that yeah. said, yeah, we're, we're going to stick to our guns. I know you had sent me that uh, the stats on, what was it, when Yahoo refused to buy Google for $1 million back in the 90s? Yeah, so essentially Yahoo and Google have like – gone back and forth and and yahoo offered to um buy google and google was like no um and then they offered to buy them again and they wanted more money and they were like no and the basically the tides turn and now uh, there was a point in which yahoo got offered 40 billion dollars to be bought out, I think, by Verizon. Um, and then the uh, they basically said no and had to settle for $4.6 billion uh, as a buyout. And that went from 2008 when they got that first initial offering to 2016. So within eight years, they basically lost a you know, 35 billion, yeah. 36 billion dollar offering for their right. company. So there's a there's a time limit on these deals, right? Mm -hmm. And I think Discord is looking at it and saying, well, we're pretty popular right now. Let's see what we can do. Let's see what we can come up with. And I if I were Discord, I wouldn't look at Microsoft's mixer thing as a deal breaker. That wouldn't be my deal breaker because Twitch had already existed when Mixer was trying to like come in and that'd be like somebody coming in right now trying to shake up the Facebook realm. And I know there's right. people trying to do it, but they're not doing it. <laughs> they're really not. Like mm -hmm. let's be honest, they're not making Nowhere waves close. to the yeah. way that Facebook really is. Yeah. And the same thing was going to happen for for uh for mixer like it was never going to be what twitch was it was hopefully going to be something different and they tried that it just maybe people weren't ready for it or whatever it may be but uh yeah i don't i i don't foresee this this ending in terms of their acquisition i think we'll hopefully see more good things come from discord and we don't want to see them get down the line to where they're like, well, we need to make money now. So we're going to turn this into a pay service. That's right. the last thing we're that discord wants because people will jump ship. They'll find something new. Yeah. And that's, and there are a lot of uh, new competitors that are waiting in the wings that are trying yeah. to offer. Cause at the end of the day, what you're doing is absolutely able to be replicated. There's oh yeah. Nothing proprietary about a chat server and a voice server um as we say this from our discord server that we're yeah. <laughs> recording uh, yeah, from yeah, we love you discord true. we love you discord <laughs> yes but that's the thing like i've i've been on slack and we yeah. there are other things we've we've recorded on zencaster before yeah. there's twitter spaces are coming up so mm -hmm. all these different platforms are looking at the same thing and microsoft's not just going to be like well, I guess we're not going to be able to move forward with this idea. They'll just go to the next person in line. Who is Discord's current competitors? And how can we leverage their, you know, and maybe maybe it was less about, maybe it was less about Discord, right? And more about the user base. Maybe the user base is what's important to Microsoft in this matter. And the same goes for Mixer. You have to look at that. Is this user base some some something that we want to foster or is it just something that's just, you know, just not worthy of our time? Right. No, I get it totally, um, and, and time will tell. But yeah, I think that in this situation, Discord sees himself more as the Google, you know, trying to get bought out by Yahoo than the Yahoo trying to get uh, bought out by Verizon. <laughs> yeah, but yeah, definitely. It's like, it's Yahoo, after they turn down that forty billion dollar deal, it's like uh, when they say no deal on deal or no deal, and then they open up like the top three cases. Oh, <laughs> in the next round, like the offer is like five hundred dollars. Just like, like oh, man, man. should have stuck with so. it. Yeah, well, come on, Howie. I don't know what we were thinking. <laughs> 
I should have I should have done it. But now, yeah. what what did Yahoo do in the in the meantime? They tried to launch their own news service and their own TV service. Come on, right. get with the picture. This is not yeah. happening. I didn't. I went to Yahoo for a while for my news because they'd have a pretty good feed, and then Facebook started doing it, and I was like, oh, this is pretty good, I guess. So yeah. I. Haven't been on Yahoo, and I have. I don't know. Oh long. yeah, there was a tremendous amount of yeah. mismanagement just every step of the way. But uh, well, Bruno, you know, believe it or not, we've got yet another story for you here. Um, it, just, a, just a curiosity. What are your thoughts on Fortnite? You like that game? I've heard of it. It's um, pretty, pretty popular from what I know. And there's this guy who's pretty good at it. He goes by the name of Owner. Right. Oh, owner. TV's owner. That's right. Yep, yeah, TV's. <laughs> Which, for those of you who don't realize, that is Bruno spelled backwards. Yes, it is. Yes. Yeah. Owner. Yeah. yeah. Owner. Whoop, yeah. So that, that, that one did take me a few days. Did it? I was. I realized like like oh, it's it's Bruno backwards. Yeah. You yeah. Know. Well, I you know it's so funny Fuck that over my head. It's some and it's something that's I've just kept the entire time because it's so simple and other people have taken it so I don't have the the you know. I don't have the market yep. share on this, obviously, for every for every platform. But you, you do oh, what man. you can, and and when you're an OG gamer and you make your account, literally, my Xbox account is uh, 14 years old. I think it's going on 15. Can you believe it, man? I've been with Xbox longer than I've been my wife, and she hates that joke. <laughs> but it's she the, does it's because it's always going to be true it's right true it's true <laughs> yeah. it's always going to be true and i let her like, know that too yeah. i i don't ever let her forget nick i'm like do you see that over there yeah. do you see that box been with me for yeah. 15 years your 50th anniversary you're going to be out at the olive garden you know and you're going to be like the only thing i've been with longer it's is xbox, xbox live <laughs> and she's going to be like I can't deal with you right now. I can't now. deal with you right now. Come Just on, give man. me some more Cheddar Bay biscuits, Red Lobster. Let's Red go. Lobster. Uh, it's like in the future where like every like casual dining restaurant just fuses into one. Yeah, it'll be like Chipotle yeah. Verizon Lobster. Chill. It's like a, yeah, yeah, the TGI Chill Lobster Garden. Ch oh, Chill Lobster Garden. Chill Lobster yeah. Garden. I love that. I love that TGI <laughs> Chilobster Garden. I'm, that's a new shirt. I don't know how I'm going to yeah. make that all into one, <laughs> but we'll do it. <laughs> if anyone can do it, it's you. Well, well speaking of mashing up of a bunch of popular things, Bruno, that's exactly what Fortnite does best with yes. this zero point event. And now we have, of course, Batman in the game. Not new. No. He's been no. there for a while. And we had a, a previous uh, skin offering. But now we have this new Fortnite and Batman comic series. This article compliments of bleedingcool.com that we found out that uh, with this new series um, that actually sees Batman get sucked into an alternate universe where he winds up in, into Fortnite. So you kind of get some backstory. Crazy. On it. It's crazy. Can you believe it? Like, I can't. That's, that's how a part of like pop, pop pop culture Fortnite is that he they get across it's like when Archie does like Sonic uh crossovers yeah. and that kind of thing. The, like, the you, Ninja you, Turtles you did level. a crossover with yeah. Batman and I thought that was crazy. And now we're seeing Batman just go into Fortnite or vice versa. Fortnite suck him into suck him into their world. But I'm excited because I love Fortnite. Like I really do. Yeah. It's just a great game to play. Um, you know, once you get over the hate um, and mm -hmm. that that factor, like you really do have to get over get over yourself. Get over yourself. Yeah. If you're out there, you're listening to this podcast, and you're like, I just can't. I can't do it with the Fortnite. Give it a try. Give it a try. You, no one's saying you have to go into the Battle Royale game. There's a Save the World game. There's a bunch of creative modes in there where you can do things like prop hunt. There's so many other things that you can do in the game besides the core game that it's, it's worth a shot of just checking it out. And to see something like this happen in a in a crossover manner where you've got physical content like a comic book, I'm all over it. But yeah. Nick, I'm I'm pretty PO'd because I knew I they I were why. I yeah, mm -hmm. I knew it was gonna happen. Tell them what's happening with this stuff. I can't yeah, even, we'll, I can't we'll even get deal here. with it. We'll get yet another Bruno Fortnite rant. These are the, the best segments on the show, quite frankly. So the in this skin, in, rather in this comic series, they are offering some items, okay, with item codes, where if you buy the $4 edition, and there's six different art uh, issues that'll come out, each with their own unique code, you can redeem it in Fortnite for uh, a skin. Now, each of these six skins, um, such as the one in issue one, which is the Harley Quinn Rebirth skin, 
um, which is designed by Amanda Connor. It's in the game, um, in the game for Fortnite. That we have this situation where every item that you can redeem will be purchasable in the item shop at some time in the future. Okay, a couple that, months out, you'll be. That should be good. It. Yeah, I can deal That's with that. Fine. That makes sense, right? Some timed exclusivity. Yeah. But Bruno, these these issues are flying off the shelves and people are then flipping them for 10 times the value oh. for each issue right now people are paying 40 dollars on ebay just for that code what the reason being that if you collect all six codes you get access to the armored batman no. zero outfit and as of right now as far as we know the only way that you're going to be able to get that skin is by collecting all six codes. You've got to catch them all. So, Bruno, are you ready to spend $250 on a skin? No, I don't want to. I can't. This isn't fair. I tried so hard and I worked so hard to get all the skins in there. And I've got a Batman skin. And I have oh, no. it on there and I have the things yeah. and I just want to be able to play it. No, yeah. I'm really actually, it does make me mad when something like this happens. Um, I remember running all over to find any type of Fortnite something or other from GameStop to be able to get the Merry Mint Axe when that came out and I thought that was a success and that was much more doable because you could choose any Fortnite thing but when with something like comics which are already hard to obtain on like on the regular unless you've got a shop that you go to that's you know you can pre-order them or, you know, just have somebody, you know, stash one away from you. It, it is frustrating. And with such a huge game like Fortnite and so many people obsessed with getting these skins, you're going to have people who have never read comics before going out and buying comics. So this is a huge huge deal and i'm not saying that that's bad because obviously that's what you want right like the comic industry is suffering and it needs to be revived in a way we need to have some type of of crossover like this where you can have new content i think about having an overwatch comic and and those types of things where you can have this physical media and tell the story behind it in a new way is perfect uh but Having to collect all of those codes for the skin is is harsh. It's really it's hard. To, it, it is. It's really hard yeah. to do, especially considering like I'm willing to pay for the skin in the game. Just put it in the game. And so hopefully they will. Hopefully they will. Or maybe they'll give you some opportunity to 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 buy it later. You know, like I said, they often do that. But uh, when I first heard about it, I was excited, and then I was promptly disappointed because, you know, I yep. don't want to have to hunt for six comics to yep. try and get this skin. Like, I just want to be able to buy it. We were talking about that with with uh, Overwatch, right? If it comes yep. through, just let me spend my money on it. I, I'm an adult now, Nick. I don't have right. time to go to different comic shops and try and get all this. Just let me buy it. And here's where we're at with this. Now, Fortnite, like, Epic, you can't win. Because like we were just talking about with the Vita store, right? When people thought it was going to shut down, they spent a bunch of money. And even though you reversed course, now people are upset because they feel like they were duped into buying all these things because they wouldn't get another chance. Well, in this case, you're in trouble because yeah. if, if, you've or if you've already implied that the armored Batman skin is only obtainable by getting all six codes, right? Yeah. Then if down the road, people have spent $300, $400, I, and I think they will, Bruno, yeah. um, to, to get this skin. And then you're like, oh, by the way, you know, in six months, we're going to release it as a one time, like $20 purchase. Those people are going to be incensed and understandably so, because you're right. They're not there for the comics. Yeah, yeah. They might collect them, but they're there for the codes. The yep. people are reselling the codes on eBay. And here's where it's going to get crazy, right? All the items, uh, the individual skins that you get from issues two through six you'll be able to buy on the item shop right away same day as the comic is published okay gotcha the first one does have a delay but once people see okay comic number one sold out like that right yeah and now they're selling forty dollars well people that are in for that are all in right they bought comics one two three and four they have to get five and six right? yeah now people the price is going to go up i guarantee you watch what happens the price of each code is going to go up and up and up because more and more scalpers are going to hoard these things and find ways to get them and now the guy who bought five codes for 50 bucks each 
is going to be held hostage by the people oh that, get, that get issue number six by a Trevor. And, uh, yeah, yeah, by Trevor. I, toilet paper, Steve, you know, flipping Trevor. Yep, scumbag mm -hmm. Steve out there. Yeah, taking taking uh, taking the win from the small guy. Listen, if you're a gamer out there, I uh, there's a couple things that I think that we can all agree agree on when it comes to skins. If if you want to buy a skin, go buy that skin. That's all you. And there's, I think, incentive for people when you have exclusive skins like Halo has done in the past where you can unlock something if you do something in the game. That's always that's always good, too. It gives people a reason to play. But hiding stuff behind these types of walls is always dangerous because you're right. It's going to open up a can of worms. But that's part of the Fortnite game. I think that we're moving towards... A new era of gaming, and I think we might start to see things like NFTs cross over with Fortnite skins and accounts. You can Could put be. a value to your account by how many right. skins you have. You can mm -hmm. clearly say, well, this these skins no longer come out. They're not available, right. and that's happened before. Nick, there are tons yeah. of skins that have been introduced to the game that are no longer available, not even in the item shop. Some that have come out that where if you didn't complete the the event that you didn't get the special styling for it and it's right. like bye-bye there it goes it's gone yeah. so it's exclusivity and you know fomo is always going to be a great marketing tactic to get people to buy these things uh it's just a shame that it it there can't it can't be regulated in a better yeah. way you know like i mm -hmm. said i one of the things as an adult i think at, you know, when when you're a kid, you don't have a lot of money to spend on games, right? But when you become an adult, you've got more money that you can spend on a game. And I personally would love like an easy pass, something like that added to games to where you can skip through certain levels. You know, I don't yeah. have time for this BS DLC pack. I would pay for that. <laughs> <laughs> to get you know to get uh, a little for further advanced uh you yeah. know weaponry in a single player game or whatever it may be so i think oh, people are, love you yeah oh yeah they're <laughs> I, i'm willing to they're, they're listening. getting a call from Ubisoft right now. They're listening. They're like, <laughs> they're like, he'll pay for it. He'll do it. Yeah. And and I will. I'll do it if it if it's going to make my experience more enjoyable. But the minute I have to start grinding for stuff, what you know, regardless if it's a skin or if it's to get new content for the game, uh, it's it's going to be tedious and cumbersome for someone like myself to to be able to do that. So kudos to all the people that are out there going to be hunting all these things. It's not something I feel like I'm going to be able to do. I just, if, if they're available, I will do it. But you're right, Nick, I'm not about to spend $250 on a Batman skin that I yeah. probably am not going to wear as much as I might, you know, some of the other skins It's really, really, really cool. I did see it. He looks cool. He kind of looks like, you know, um, the Zach, what is it? The Zack Snyder cut of Justice League. Yeah, the, League. Ben, the Ben Affleck, uh, like armored Batman, <laughs> yeah, right? Takes on Superman. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> Affleck. That's right. Yeah. You know, it's it's it, it's it's a shame. I, I I would have hoped that Epic would have learned their lesson, like when they did that uh, that Samsung Galaxy promotion, where you had to like uh, oh. play Fortnite on on a certain device, and all those kids were like going into Best Buys trying to I tried use to like do the it. demo. Yeah, I mean, everyone did, right? Because it was so rare. It was just the it was the rarity of it. Because it was like that, or like a hundred dollars worth of V bucks. It was a crazy promotion. Yeah. But, um. You know. Yeah. You know. I they, they didn't learn their lesson. Like I said, hopefully they are able to keep up with the demand in terms of. I mean, it's you know, it's it's a it's a it's a comic. It's not that hard to yeah. produce. Like you should be able to make as many as people want. And now you know. Okay. Well, it's a digital one, code. One. That's the first thing. Like it's a well, digital yeah, code. So I mean, yeah, like yeah, as, that too. It, with the you know, yes, there's a finite amount of of comics that they can print but they the digital code itself they could they could right. do tons of things with it oh there's no excuse yeah there's yeah, yeah it's there's yeah. no way around it, even if right. like 
I would say if it wasn't a physical comic and they maybe had like a way to download the digital version of the comic, that would even be better. Like that would even yeah. be better to guarantee that everyone could have it. But when you revolve it around a physical piece of media that has to be printed and like mm -hmm. there's a limit, right? There's going to be a limit on how many they print. They're not just yeah. going to like keep printing them. It's, you know, that's that's a that's a tough that's a tough sell. It's a tough sell. All day, all day. Well, yeah, time will tell. Hopefully they figure out a solution that makes it so that anyone that wants to get a hold of that skin can in a reasonable manner. But uh, for the meantime, uh, got to catch them all, Bruno. Get them codes. <laughs> I don't want to do it. Got to get them codes. I'm sorry. Do it. That's the way it goes. I don't Batman. Do it. Batman. Batman. Everyone loves Batman. Na -na 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 Batman. Yes. Oh, Adam West all the all day. Have you but, heard, uh, uh, not to, not yeah. to just just before we go, have you heard the remixes where the guy takes out all of the like the bats from it and it's just man 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 and they they even do Spider-Man too. There's like one with where it's like here comes man man Man, man, yep, man, 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 man. Yep. Like whatever a man can. Yeah, exactly. I love it. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I'm in. I'm in. Oh I love stuff man. Like that. Uh, Bruno. Well, hey, special thanks to our sponsor, as always, PodThreads.com. You can show your love of the podcast audio revolution with eye-catching t-shirt designs and more. Use promo code QTB at checkout for 15% off your order. There are only 100 co 100 codes. Let me try that again. There are only 100 codes available, so act fast. And Bruno, that code is going to expire on April 28th. So if you have not uh, hopped over to that site yet, check it out. They have been such a great sponsor. Uh, yeah, really. Really, really working for it. You know, a lot of ways we've been working with them to create cool designs, the hashtag podcast and game tea that you'll see right there on oh, the yeah. page when you go to podthreads.com was a collaboration design between us and then we worked with them yeah. on that and so you know it's very cool to see uh, a, a place like that that's supporting podcasters like us totally um and so you know uh, supporting them supports us so definitely check them out and uh, and pick up a cool t-shirt because uh right. you know we we, we we definitely have already and uh yeah uh, thanks again to all of our patreon supporters like nick nick epic capture productions and the dudas monk if you would like a shout out at the end of each and every episode plus bonus content like our QTB Nostalgia Vault episodes and even exclusive merch you can't get anywhere else. Support us today at patreon.com slash quit the build. Bruno, what do you got for him? Oh man, you guys better check out that QTB website. That's quitthebuild.com. If you go to quitthebuild.com, you're going to be greeted with our homepage, which will give you a little bit more information about what is Quit the Build, what we're all about. You'll be able to listen to every episode of the podcast and see the latest and greatest blog entries that we have from all of our QTB contributors. The most recent one Nick is a novelty video game console list that Brad just put out. And I got to <laughs> tell it. you, I can't believe some of the ones that exist on there. We kicked it off with the Tiger electronic handheld games that we yeah, all yeah. had as a kid. I don't oh, know how definitely. they duped us. They were terrible. Yeah. They were horrible. But They were stocking stuffers. Yeah, they were. They were great stocking yeah. stuffers. And now they're making a comeback because who doesn't want to keep that little bit of nostalgia in your mm -hmm. hand? And I'm telling you, if you want some nostalgia in and around your face region, just go to Quit the build.com because we've right got awesome yeah we've got awesome blogs and like i said you can follow us all over the internet we're on tiktok youtube twitter facebook instagram and we even have a discord that you can join so I, can. I think that pretty much does it for me is there anything else you want to say to the people before we go i like y'all you're oh, nice people. You Thanks are. For stopping by. Like really, <laughs> we do. Yeah. We can't see your face, but I'm sure it's awesome. I hope Thanks you don't have here. to wear a paper bag when you when yeah. you go out in public. But it's in it's, all seriousness, guys. You know, thank you so yeah. much for listening. It, it means the world to us. We we were really really happy with uh, with the progress the podcast has made, and we've got a lot of big interviews coming down the pipeline, big announcements that are uh, that are in the works. So uh, stay tuned for all that. And just thanks so much for making us a part of your routine. It really does mean the world. That's right, and you can listen to us every. Every Wednesday and Saturday, we are available wherever podcasts are heard, but you can win some awesome swag if you leave us a review on applepodcast.com. So 
Uh, be sure. Is it ApplePodcast.com? Well, whatever. ApplePodcast.net. Is it Apple? It's dot That's your local Apple Podcast. (laughs) Wherever you get your Apple Podcasts on, whether that's iTunes or Apple Podcasts, Podcast app or Podcast Podcast. We're just going to keep saying podcast until it clicks. Thank you you so much for tuning in. For Nick, I'm Bruno. And for Bruno, I'm Nick. Peace out. What it do? (laughs) Shabam. (laughs) <laughs> searching for that exit i don't know sometimes it comes and no, sometimes <laughs> i always make the ending sound real nice you oh, do man you do well thanks so much i had a bunch of a uh, bunch of viewers there on the stream hey everybody what's going on one hour one decision good guy benny kung fu penguin love that guy oh yeah oh yeah i like y'all though we like you too That's we great. like you too yeah we're so glad you guys have uh joined and and yeah. we're a part of the stream um did you guys see did it hit the corner it does hit the corner. I, uh, I've been told. Okay. It does hit the corner. Good to there. know. Because <laughs> that's that's what you're there for. If it that's doesn't hit the corner, then you're you're peddling lies. He well, no. See, he saw, oh. <laughs> see, I told <laughs> you. I told you. It happens. <laughs> it happens. So All funny. right. Well, we are gonna go and start editing this. Well, Nick's gonna start yeah. editing this, and I'll that's be waiting do. for the clips to uh, to put up on all the socials. Uh, but you can yeah. catch us again on Friday. We record all of our episodes the day before they release. So you can catch us live on mm-hmm. Tuesdays and Fridays. Same time, same place. Yeah. That's twitch.tv slash quit the build. And don't forget, Bruno, that now we are doing uh, our affiliate streams um, every now and then. We don't have a set schedule right now. You may have seen uh, I did a couple uh, this week just to kind of do a test run. And it went well. Yeah. Um, where either of us might be hopping on just to play whatever. It could yep. be a, a, a game that we're going to be reviewing or that we have reviewed on the or interviewed on the show or just whatever we feel like playing or maybe what people want to see us play. Um, so just like everything else is something that we're trying as a way to interact with our fans. So, yeah. um, you know, if you do see those streams, it'll probably be like on a weekday evening, but we'll try yep. to make an announcement on Twitch um, if we happen to go live. Um, so, yeah, be on the lookout for some uh, extra stuff with our with our stream as well. We've got extra content just out the wazoo. If you know yeah. Where to look. All yeah. All right. Mm-hmm. Well, that does it for me. Anything else for our Twitchers out there? Our Twitch streamer, lemur, reamers? <laughs> our, our Twitcher, our Twitchers. <laughs> Twitchers. Yeah, uh, yeah, nothing for them. But yeah, thanks so much, guys. Thanks for thanks for tuning in. We always appreciate it. All right, guys. You guys have a good one. Peace out. What a deal.